Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name's Ruan and this is my YouTube channel, The Yorkshire Sew Girl. Um, I haven't been around for a couple of weeks. Um, yes, I've been missing in action, uh, mostly because life has just got in the way. How very rude. Um, yeah, juggling a job, two young kids, homeschooling, etc, etc has meant that yeah I haven't had a chance to really do something like this um, and I think it'd be really nice to maybe do a video when you know my family's not in the house and I don't have to fear them bursting in here and commando rolling and things like that so um, they're downstairs uh, they don't know I'm doing a YouTube channel uh, video thing so I might be all right because if I tell them that I'm doing it chances of interruption are likely to very likely whereas maybe I might get to hide away a little bit and just see what happens so I'll just quickly get on. So today I'm gonna talk about my February plans. I do need to do my January makes video as well but I need to pull everything together for that it's gonna take a little bit longer so yeah uh, I'll maybe try and do that next weekend I'll see how I get on. Um, but today I'm gonna do February makes and I'm also gonna talk about a little challenge that um myself and another friend have pulled together um which is going to be really exciting and that everybody can get involved with but i'll give you a little bit more information about that at the end okay so i've been thinking about what i want to make this month now i'm having my eye turned a lot to spring type summery fabrics at the moment i don't know if everybody else is even though all i want to do is wear joggers and sweats <laughs> so what's going on um maybe why i've chosen to wear this actually today so this is the hemlock top by stitch witch patterns so it's like almost like a kimono style top that wraps over and then you can put a little tie on it and i was one of the pattern testers for it. it's a really nice pattern i think i've talked about it in one of my previous videos um there will be many more of them in my future i believe if i don't get distracted by new patterns all the time which is what seems to be happening at the moment um, and as you can see, I've, got, I've just bought a new fabric there as well, which is just thought I'd put it on my mannequin just to make it look a bit pretty. And my mannequin doesn't have a name, though. I think everybody else's mannequins have names, or is that just me? don't know. Um, so, yeah, I need to think of a name for her, don't I? don't really know. Brenda? <laughs> Brenda the mannequin? Don't ask me why I said Brenda. I have no idea. Um, anyway, I'm waffling. So, yeah, so... I'm trying to steer away from doing beautiful summery things, which is kind of where my head's going at the moment. But I'm also writing all of my ideas down as I go um, so that I don't forget them when it does come around to the time where it would be seasonally appropriate to actually make those things. But what I thought I might do this month is do a few snuggly, warm, cosy things that are going to be really easy to do. I can whip them up on my overlocker quite quickly, hopefully. And then maybe a couple of things that are a bit more delicate, It'll test me a little bit. Um, I don't know about everybody else, and this may go against the grain from what other people think, but I tend to get better satisfaction out of the more detailed makes that I do. I absolutely love whipping something up really quickly, but I feel like I'm racing to get to the end because I know the end's so close because it's a quick, easy make that I'm like rushing it, and I don't think I do my best sewing when I'm rushing. Whereas when I do a more detailed make, I tend to take my time, make sure everything's immaculate each step by step. Really strange. Um, so I think what I'm gonna try and do each month is do stuff, a mixture of stuff that's quite quick to whip up and then a couple of things that might take me a little bit longer. We'll see. I mean, I might not, but who knows? I like to try and plan these things. I throw all these things out, don't I? Whether any of it comes actually to pass is another story. So number one is actually a snuggly one um and i wasn't going to buy this only because i've got a couple of other patterns that use stretch knit type fabrics and i'm like you don't need it Ruan. you don't need that pattern you just don't need it and then i think i saw it and it was on sale fabric magpie and i just had to have it <laughs> and i've just seen it every everybody's been making it and i just love all of them and since i've uh, made my billy sweatshirt dress which i love um oh yeah i've just decided just get it just get it just get it not spending money on anything else at the minute just get it and that is the nina lee south bank sweater so most people have probably seen this it's all over instagram they look absolutely gorgeous 
Um, I think it was Michelle from Sewing Bunny that first turned my eye. I think she's got sew along as well on this one. I might be wrong. Um, but what I like about it as well is you've got the different options. So there's a dress version, um, like a hip length version and then a cropped version as well. And I actually thought the cropped version would be really nice for lounge wear type if you made it a bit more oversized. Yeah, baby. And also probably doesn't take up that much fabric either. So this ranges from a size six, which is a 32 bust, 24 waist and a 33 and a half hip to a 46 bust, a 38 waist and a 47 and a half inch hip. So I'm definitely going to do version one, which is the one on the front cover, which is the dress version, because I'm all about the slouchy, 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 loungy put together um yeah I'm, I'm all about that at the moment at home so I feel like if I wear something like this I'm not quite as do you know what I mean scruffy because <laughs> I am scruffy at the moment I look shocking most of the time I've made an effort for you all today um it's not common at the moment put it that way so yeah so I think I'm gonna have a go at this now I've gone through the jersey fabrics, the knit fabrics that I've got in my stash and I can't decide. I've got three. Okay, so two of which I bought in the Samantha Claridge Studio sale. And I love both of them in equal measure for different reasons. So there's this one, which is the most beautiful, soft, sweat and tight knit. It's not really mega thick. And it's in this, it's just really, really soft in like a black, charcoal black and grey, massive dog tooth, which I think would be really nice in that. You might even get away with wearing that, you know, with some nice black tights and boots, possibly. And then the other thing that I got, which was my curveball when, when I ordered my stuff from Samantha Claridge, and that is this kind of rainbow flowered, looks a bit quilted, type of fabric it's not quilted well, maybe it is a little bit quilted but I also thought that would look really nice in it as well and then I've seen loads of people <laughs> in the cable knit I just want to make everything in that cable knit so I've also got my petrol teal coloured cable knit <sighs> so I've also got the sew over it heather dress as well in my little pattern stash ready um and i've seen some in cable on it which look beautiful as well so i just i don't know might have to it dip dog poop you are it type of thing with those three because i just don't know but that's going to be my first project so i need to get my finger out really don't i then if anybody follows me on instagram they might have seen that i use some fabric out of my stash because I had to buy this pattern that was brand new from True Bias. And you'll have seen this everywhere. It's the Marlow sweater. Well, they call it sweater over there, but obviously we call it a cardi. Cardigan. Um, so I've made this version. Excuse my notes. I'll just scribble all over it. Need to find a better way of doing that. Um, but I've made this in a really nice navy speckled cosy fabric. And I really like it. And I love wearing it around the house because it just it's just so cosy, funnily enough. So I made that and I also made the True Bias Hudson pants in some jogging fabric that I got from the Samantha Claridge Studio sale. So they kind of went together um, and I loved them both that much that uh, I've bought some fabric and I'm, I pray to the Lords that um, I'll be able to get both of these things out of this fabric. So I saw this fabric on Lamarzi Fabrics website and I fell in love with it and I was like no get it made up in the fabric that you've got already to trial it out and see what you think um and then you can have it and when I went to go get it there wasn't hardly any left <laughs> so anyway the story continues I messaged Lamazi Fabrics and they said leave it with us let's go and see if there's any left last bit on the bolt anyway they came out and said we've got just over three meters well I think I'm gonna need three and a half meters so we'll just have to wait and see what I can squidge out of it but you tell I'm excited about this one. <laughs> so I've got it. Fantastic customer service by Lamazi Fabrics. So I've bought this, like a rose-coloured, ribbed, stretchy velour. 
<laughs> um, now, I'm going to try and make the Marlowe and the Hudson pants out of this for like total luxury, will never be seen outside the house kind of thing. Um, now, I don't know whether this is going to look super chic or super chavvy. I don't know. If I manage to get it out of it, we'll see. Um, so, yeah, I really want to have a go at that. It's got really good stretch, so I think it's going to be really, really comfy. Um, and it'll be gorgeous around the house, won't it? Oh, it reminds me of, you know, when you see people travelling in velour all the time. When you go to the airport, and they've always got, like, joggers and a sweater on, and it's all in velour. And I think, they look all right. Well, some of them do. No. <laughs> So that's my other plan. So that is the True Bias Marlowe sweater and the Hudson pants. So the Marlowe sweater, let me have a quick look, goes from a 32 chest, 26 waist and a 34 hip, all the way to a 44 and a half chest, a 38 and a half waist and a 46 and a half hip. And the Hudson pants, which are really nice because you can also do like a shorter length as well. Um, I've added a lot of length onto mine because I've got really long legs because I'm five foot nine. Um, but I think these would be quite nice, maybe in the summer. Although I don't think they're going to be for me, but you never know. And now that I've got some my husband's after some as well, and they do do a men's version, so that might be coming up soon as well. And for the Hudson pants, the size chart is 26 waist, 34 hip, ranging up to a 38 and a half waist and a 46 and a half hip. So that's my plan for that. It's going to be a disaster or it's going to be wonderful, isn't it? I'm not quite sure. So then obviously I want to do something a bit more detailed. Um, now, I'm just going to slurp a tea. just need a slurp of my tea, cuppa, me my cuppa. It's because I'm gabbing on so much. I've seen so many versions of this. Definitely didn't think this was for me, but I've bought it because I don't think I can live without making one and seeing what it's going to be like. And that is the Dear and Doe Maya Sotis dress again, which has been everywhere, all over Instagram. It tends to be a lot of people's like on favourite pattern. And when you see a lot of people saying that, then makes you think that maybe you need to have a bash doesn't it um now i'm not a massive smock dress kind of gal but i've seen a lot of people use t waist ties and things like that so i do like there's two different versions one with like a tiered um skirt and also a lovely flounce sleeve here and then there's a plain version so don't know which one i'm going to go for yet i don't think i'll probably go for the flounce one to start off with i don't know if that's me or not i'm not sure um, so I think I might go for this, but maybe I'll add the flouncy bit on. I don't know. We shall wait and see. Um, but this is yet a deer and doe pattern. And measurements wise, let's have a look. It goes from a 31 and a half bust, 23 and a half waist and a 33 and three quarters hip all the way to a 41 bust, 33 waist and a 43 and a half hip, which is crazy. Bearing in mind, I'm a size 12 slash 14, more on the 14 side. And yeah, I'm only just going to fit in that size range. But I have seen, I believe, on their Instagram that they are looking to um, extend their sizes, which is really good news. Um, but yeah, maybe French people are just all thin. But sticking sets, but you know, us women, we like a little bit of shapage don't we so i'm gonna have a go at that i think and this will be my more detailed make and the fabric i'm gonna use is the latest fabric that i got from my so Haley jane box which is this one that i think i showed in my last video so it's like a maroony red color with little beige flowers in with little red centers um and i thought that'd look really nice because I kind of look at that dress and think it's a bit summery, but I was thinking if you kind of did it with this fabric, then it's a bit more autumn and maybe with some thick black tights and boots, a little jacket. I think that'd look quite nice even in, um, you know, autumn, winter. And then you can always wear it with some nice little gold flip flops and a 
little crossbody bag in the summer or something. Check me out, I'm trying to style it up in my head. So I think that'd be quite good because I think you'd get quite a bit of use out of that. So I need to have a look at length and what I need to do with that, but that's going to be kind of my more detailed mate. Now, I'm being very adventurous, bearing in mind, what day is it? Sunday. So it's 6th of February and I haven't made any of these yet. And I'm like, I'm going to make all these in February. The likelihood is there will be some fallout from this commitment that I'm making. But the other thing that I would like to make is something out of the book that I got given for Christmas, which is the Breaking, uh, Breaking the Pattern book by Named Clothing. Now, I really want to sew with double gauze. I love double gauze. Whenever I see anybody make anything with double gauze, I absolutely love it. Um, I was having a flick through this the other day and I saw, what's it called? Is it the Sadie Blouse and Tunic? Which is this here? See it? So it's this is made in double gauze and I think that's what caught my eye. Now it's got ties around the cuff and the waist and then it's got a split all the way down the arm hmm not sure but i've seen a few people on i'd look at it on instagram that have you know put a little tack in it or or not had that at all so that's the line drawing there for you so you can see so i think i'm gonna have a go at that i might have to lengthen it a little bit i don't mind cropped but because i'm five foot nine sometimes things can be too cropped and no one needs to see this midriff after two children you know so I think I'm going to have a bash at this. Um, yeah. So the measurements for this are, they go from size one to nine and size one is 90, oh, wait a minute, inches, Ruan, inches. 37 and a quarter inches bust, 38 waist. Doesn't really say hips on this bit, but I'm sure it does on the beginning bit. Up to a 51 and a quarter bust and a 52 and a quarter waist. Now, my hips come out quite a lot, so I need to just be a bit careful because I don't think this is supposed to come down to your hips. But I might be extending it a little bit, so I need to be a bit careful with my sizing on this one. Um, but I always look at the finished measurements anyway because it looks like there's a lot of ease in this pattern. Um, there's supposed to be. Um, so I'm quite happy to, you know, potentially size down because I'm not exactly big boobed, you know. I don't have those assets. And the fabric I'm going to use, I think, is this one. Now, this is a really nice double gauze um, that I've had in my stash that I got from Fabricate in Murfield um, quite a while ago now. Um, it must have been at the beginning of lockdown, you know, where you could make an appointment and go for half an hour and there was only one person allowed in the shop and all that jazz. Um, and I just loved it at the time. Now, it is a little bit see-through. You can't really see. Oh, yeah, you can. So that's my only worry. But then I thought, well, I can always wear a little white vest top underneath it or a little cami or something like that. So mm, I think that I think I'm going to give that a go, even though it's probably not that seasonally appropriate. Um, I think that would be a really nice one to have in my wardrobe. And I really want to try working with double goals. So it will be a little bit of a challenge for me. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so there's a few things there. Whether I do them all or not is another story. Um, oh, and an update on my sewing room thingy my jig. I'm definitely going to do a sewing room vlog, how I changed it all, etc. Because everybody put loads of lovely comments on the bottom of my video when I mentioned it. Um, I have had someone to come and give me quotes to do a new built-in wardrobe and a built-in desk and everything. And let's just say, yeah, that ain't going to be happening. Because, uh, yeah, it's a lot of spandoulies that I'm not willing to put into this. So I'm gonna have to go to plan B and uh, yeah, probably do an Ikea shop. <laughs> so I'm just researching at the moment some things because I feel like I need to get better organized. I've got bits and bobs everywhere. Um, we've had some electrics done as well. So on this wall here, <clears throat> it's absolutely, for, you can't see it, but down there it's absolutely knackered because we've had some electric ports put in and all sorts of stuff and all my wallpaper's been ripped off my wall and everything. So it's going to be a case of going right back to scratch. Um, but yeah, I'm doing a bit of research on that. So it'll be a while off yet, but I'm going to try and work out how I can do that to show you the progress as it goes, because it's such a small room as well. It's not like I can get you and take you around with me. It's dead dinky. So I'll have a think about how I'm going to do that. Last but not least, though, is can you remember, anybody that's watched my videos before, when I talked about Vlogmas and I talked about feeling a little bit stalkerish and also a little bit like, felt like everybody was my mate 
even though I don't know them. Yeah. Oh, I've got a proper mate. Yeah, I have. Well, I've not met her, but she's my proper mate. She's my proper mate on Instagram and YouTube. And that is the lovely Sam from Frugalissima. Now, if anybody doesn't um, follow Sam, I will link all the details down below. Get yourself over there. She, her channel is so different to mine. Um, so Sam's channel is all about information and I find it fascinating and I've followed Sam for quite some time now. Um, so I literally come on here and I just blah, 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 blah. Sam actually gives you information that you need. <laughs> yeah, she's really inspiring. Um, and she does um, something every Friday called Frugal Friday, which is all about free patterns, um, discounts, giveaways, all that stuff. So I love watching her videos because her content is really, really good. So knowing that Sam is from, from Yorkshire, like I am, we've kind of started messaging a bit recently. And we sort of said to each other, just because of lockdown and we're not doing much, should we do a bit of a collab and like, have a look and see if there's anything that we want to do? And anyway, it's evolved since then. That's all I'm going to say. So at first we were kind of like, oh yeah, let's do something together. Blah, blah, blah. We'll, we'll vlog about it. Be good fun. And then it's just, yeah, escalated. So what we've come up with is a challenge kind of for everybody to get involved with. And it's going to be called Frugal Frocks. So the idea behind this is you find a pattern, a free pattern. So there's some caveats behind that. I mean, free patterns preferably it would be something that you find online because then you can do loads of research and see what's out there and I've done a bit of research and there's so much more out there than I ever knew there would be um it could be a self-drafted dress I suppose that kind of thing or a free pattern that you got in a magazine or something but the idea behind this is that you don't have to spend a lot of money on it so yeah the main thing is that it's a free pattern then you have to go into your stash Oh yes, this is a good opportunity to get rid of some of that stuff in your stash and have a look and see if there's something in your stash that would be appropriate for this dress pattern. The idea then is to make it up and then on the 31st of March, we'll all reveal what we've made. So we've put it out to a few uh, other vloggers um, in the sewing community and the uptake has been brilliant. So we've got a lot of other YouTubers that are really interested in joining us on this challenge, which is fantastic. So at that point, we kind of thought, do you know what? It'd be really nice if there was just some prizes as well for anybody else who got involved. Um, so yeah, I've been on the scrounge, you know, but I'm a Yorkshire lass, so I can get away with it. Um, and we've got some amazing prizes as well. Um, I'm still in the process of pulling all of that together. Um, so that will be announced at some point, but myself and Sam, will be running what we're going to call Frugal Frocks 2021. So the idea now then is that we all to start, anybody who wants to have a, wants to join in and it is open to anybody in the community, start having a look online at free dress patterns, start having a look in your stash and then yeah, hopefully making an item and revealing it all on Instagram or if you've got a YouTube channel on YouTube um, on the 31st of March and then the week after we will be picking out some people to win all the amazing prizes that a lot of lovely lovely businesses have donated to us and yet yeah, there will be more details on that obviously as we go along and because there's other um sewing vloggers involved you'll start to see more on their videos as well and hopefully we're all going to do um a short video um, to explain all the options of the research that we've done, um, what we've got in our stash, what are the possibilities, and maybe a few sneak peeks at maybe what we've decided. But yeah, the final reveal will be on the 31st of March. So I hope loads of you want to get involved. I think it'd just be a lovely thing to do while we're all in this situation where we can't get out. It's a little bit of a challenge. We don't have to spend a lot of money on it. That's the whole point is that it will be frugal. Um, and then to see everybody's makes on the 31st of March would just be amazing. Um, yeah, so what started off as a two person collab thing is hopefully going to get a lot bigger than that. Um, and I just think it'd be really nice to see. I've seen loads of other challenges and things like that on Instagram and I've been involved in a few and it's just a really nice sense of community, I, I think. Um, and it's all about positivity. Um, and if we're doing it all with stuff that we've already got and free patterns, then it's not going to cost us the world either. So 
yes so it's still in development we'll be doing some official announcements soon um but today was the first day that kind of myself and sam had decided we'd um let it all out of the bag um and then what we'll be able to do is let you know all of the other youtube bloggers um that are being involved and we can link you to all of them um so it might be a way of discovering potentially any new people as well on youtube that you might not follow already so I'm excited, as you can imagine. I love a challenge. Um, it's not meant to be any pressure. There is no pressure whatsoever to be involved if you don't want to, but obviously we would love it if you did. Right, so this is where I start garbling on about absolutely nothing. So I'm gonna stop right now. I'm gonna go have a cup of tea. I'm gonna go warm it up because it's already got cold because I'm jabbering on. Um, and hopefully I'll be back next week with my makes from January. I know I've done this kind of the other way around, but hey ho. I will come back and hopefully let you know because I made quite a bit in January, which was good. Mm -hmm. So I hope everybody's doing well. Um, I know it's a bit bad at the minute, but let's make the most of what we can and let's join in in our fabulous sewing community and get some sewing done. Bye.